just kind of what it said. And I brought that here just simply because it was it was in the Minneapolis paper, and the gentleman who wrote it was you know, considered highly considered in his profession. So that's your advice about advisors. <laughs> I, I, you know, that's the advice of a gentleman who does it for a living. Yeah. All right. One of the questions I have for the, for the board is uh, looking at the document here that the partnership will continue relations with key recruitment and retention allies and they list a whole number of folks here, a number of businesses or organizations and if the board is already doing that, already has relations and with all of these, why would we duplicate that? The board and director are already in touch with all of these groups. Why do we need another group to do that? I believe that it says continue it, continue the relationships. There's no intent to duplicate the efforts. None whatsoever. Most of those were listed, came right out of the Newmark study. Newmark said continue those relationships. Um, we felt it important just to include it in the document. You want to remove it from the document, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's already being done. There was no intent to duplicate the efforts. None. Well, it's already being done, so I guess I'm trying to understand all it was, all that paragraph does is reiterate what we're already, what you're already doing, the key to board is doing, or I should say Paul is already doing. Well, I think Paul and members of the board, I think there's yeah. a number of us that are... Yeah. That's why it says continue relations, relations with key recruitment and retention allies. That's... A number of us have uh, contacts with these organizations that are part of them. I view this meeting as an opportunity to sit down as a board and with Paul at the table to find out how this was going to affect us. What caught my attention was the uh, flow chart, and, and I mentioned at the last meeting. It wasn't clear to me. I think I think that needs some discussion if we're even going to go that direction. Um, I know Paul put together an organizational chart that shows all the things we're involved in now. And how does that fit in with, with this group? Uh, what I saw at the last meeting didn't show anything else other than voyage forward. And uh, we have a lot of uh, intermingled relationships with other organizations. How does that fit into this board? So I, I view the discussion as this board and where do we want to go? And how do we want it organized? as I said at the last meeting, was that organizational chart. But, uh, Mr. Welcome said, well, this is something that evolves. Well, when it comes to the organizational chart, that's not something that really evolves. Or if it does, then let's start out you know, and see how that goes before we even set the organizational chart, how this all plays in. Mr. Nevin, it's time. I mean, we are involved in a lot of huge projects right now that are taking up a lot of his time. Millions of dollars worth of projects. How much time are we going to take here? How is this, how is this all going to uh, be handled under Paul's time schedule? We've never had that discussion. I, I don't know where Paul is at on this, but those are just some of the things that I thought this board is the oversight board for uh, KEDA. Those are things we should talk about and understand, and I think no. And uh, that wasn't clear to me. I 
said then, we've never sat down and discussed it as a board. So I was a little reluctant to jump into something that we haven't had an opportunity to talk about. Where, where do we want to go? I mean, ultimately, we're responsible. And so can we have that discussion today? You're the chairman. Well, I, I would like Paul to move up to the table so we can. Yeah. Um, I think one of the questions I have uh, with regard to that is how many organizations are we as a key board or as staff that you and uh, Jenny Herman and Kyra are administrating for right now? Well, provided that that org chart that, that shows uh, they, kind of our internal and external kind of relationships with, with local and regional and state organizations, but directly it would be on the nobody gets a copy on the left side of that diagram and well in the SBDC. It's cold weather testing, certainly. Kuchko, we administer. Uh, Kyra, is the administrator of the KCDA. She's also the airport secretary. I'm an airport commissioner. Um, and then you see underneath there, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a member of, uh, board member of the ARDC. Um, so, I mean, direct um, administration uh, would be those, those, those would be the primary. And most of those groups uh, meet monthly um, or bi-monthly. So uh, there is a fair amount of administration occurring. I'm also serving on two other drivers as part of the Voyage Forward effort. And that is a concern just for, for not just this effort, this specific driver, but all of the drivers is the, the, the time commitment for citizen involvement. It's, it's, you know, and I don't know if, if effectiveness is measured against how many times you meet, who's at the table, but certainly over time, getting people from throughout the county to meet on a regular basis is going to be a challenge, um, plus the time of staff. The other question I have is just about cost and about, about if this is primarily a marketing effort, a communication effort, you know, what, what kind of dollars are we, are we looking at here? Um, where are those dollars going to come from? And that, again, not just for this driver, but all the drivers. It's it's not quite shaped yet, and I understand that it would take time to get. But I I'd be more comfortable if I had a better understanding of what we're looking at when people say marketing. What is that? What do we mean in here? Um, expanding. And nobody's asked me uh, to this point what we're currently doing. Uh, and what we've done in the past, what we're currently doing, and why. Who's our audience? Who's our, tar our target audiences? I think that's important to understand um, because we have done some things in the past that we don't do any longer because we felt they were no longer of value. So you focus on where the value is. We spent a lot of time on the foreign trade zone effort. That was where a lot of our marketing was at. Uh, now it's on trade and logistics and basically um, transportation because we're looking a great deal at that. Timber is still a big part of it. Um, uh, and, and light manufacturing, those are kind of the target areas. But uh, I think I just, I'd, I'd feel more comfortable if people would have taken the time to kind of say, well, what, what have you guys done in the past? How much have you spent? Where have you gone? Um, what, did, what have you felt uh, the return on that's been, if any? Or how do you measure it? Um, because you can spend a lot of money in a short period of time, I think. Um, we were talking uh, about some of the organizations. I think Bob, you were on the timber organization, and they spent. Um, oh yeah, the, the forest industry. Yeah, we we spent over three hundred and fifty thousand for any number of years attempting to move the needle um, with uh, Minnesota, and uh, very very little change. Spend a, an awful lot of money and, and not get uh, a lot of gain. I think.
think what and what I found is most effective is well targeted smaller smaller scale things uh, like the logistics forum uh, where you one on one uh, the, with the site selectors or an audience that they, they only have like 45 members as part of that uh, uh, seminar. So it's very face to face, it's very um, personal. Um, those are the most, I think, most uh, most effective. We do, do we do send out some, some targeted mailings as well uh, to the logistics and third party supplier uh, groups? That we've established over time, and we've built a database that's over the course of this body's life that we continually update, modify, um, and that that covers a whole host of, of, of relationships that have been uh, developed. So, um, I, I, I'm I'm a big fan of more communication. I mean, that that is a, a underlying a lot of this too. It's just better communication countywide. I think that that. Uh, you know, that should still be a goal is to expand that communication where where we can voyage forward uh, website you know I mean who's gonna that's a good tool for, for for some of that internal customer the countywide customer but you know who's going to maintain that over time it takes time and energy and, and money to, to do it properly so those are just some of the questions but again I'm, I'm supportive of, of increased communication um, increased outreach where we can I'm not a marketing expert or a branding expert. I can probably define the words, but this is not active marketing. But this, doc this document is not targeting audiences. This document is not identifying prospects. This document is creating a unified message, one message for the entire county. That's what it is. Who you send the, the marketing materials to, how it's presented to those customers, that's not on the scope of this, Paul. This is about identifying that unified message that represents International Falls, Rainier, Little Fork, Big Falls, North Home, everybody. That's what it means. I would argue that we're doing that already. Really? You don't think we are? No. Hmm? You don't, no, I don't, I, don't I do really not believe really? that there is a countywide message for economic development. So we, we uh, as a KEDA board are responsible for a couple of websites already. KEDA has a website. Correct. And the airport has a website. And both of those are maintained by Kyra. Correct. In addition to being administration for co-weather testing for the Kuchko uh, Economic Group, uh, KCDA, Airport Commission, Small Business Development Corporation, serve in, in a number of organizations. Yes, I, I would certainly question the time. You know, Paul indicated that he's on three of the destiny drivers. One of the destiny drivers is the business retention and jobs, I believe it's called. Is that accurate, Paul? Go on diverse business. That is spot on with what Kita does. I mean, that's the purpose of Kita, I would think. Business, jobs, and retention. Correct. This driver was born out of the number one recommendation from Newmark to create the unified brand, unified one message, etc. And to say, no, I don't. I do not believe that there is. If a constituent comes here, and I, I cannot remember who it was, I cannot remember who in the audience said this, but if a prospect comes here and wants a new business or, or to build a new business, where do they go? Do they go to I Falls EDA? Do they go to Little Fork? Or do they go to Kita? Or do they go to North Home Progressive? That's why Kita was created in the first place, to be one stop. And that's why we've consolidated, Absolutely, we've consolidated under everything under one roof. That's Where why there's the one message. All of these organizations are consolidated for better use of resources so that people have one stop. That was the whole, uh, the way it was designed, the way it's trying to be implemented. I agree, 100%. Go ahead. 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 Go ah
why wouldn't KEDA want representation for the cities? We do have representation. Where? Oh, we're not represented? International Falls certainly is. World Boucherine County, I believe, certainly is. I can address that, Mr. Chair. Since I was, Mike was with me on the line. When we set this up, we set it so that there were two county representatives, preferably the rural commissioners who represent all of those cities. We set the violence up so that one had to be a rural commissioner in case one didn't want to serve. It's like Ryan's here. Having said that, their purpose, uh, the purpose of those two members of this board are specifically to represent the rest of the company, including those cities. That's the KEDA board. Right. Right? Yeah. Okay, this is this is not the partnership. I'm not talking about the KEDA board. I understand that. I understand the legislative constraints created by that piece of legislation. But why wouldn't why wouldn't you want city representation involved with the key director? I guess is the basic question. But it, it does happen. Uh, we right, we had the North Home Industrial Working Group uh, for how many years? We were traveling to North Home on a very regular basis, stopping in Big Falls as part of the outreach. Um, and again, it's it's. It's a function of proportionality. How much time and energy do you spend uh, on 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 the whole county? It's it's a big county. It's it's difficult, but that's that just makes it easier when you bring all the players together. Well, it, it, it does, but does it become a formal organization unto itself? That's what I'm struggling. With. I mean, that's what I said. I'm a big fan of increased communication. Uh, you know, we've tried as a board to meet in the old communities uh, on, a, on a fairly regular basis. Uh, that's been part of that outreach. Um, so it, it, it is occurring. It, could, it, could it be elevated? Certainly. Um, I think when we, when we began the, uh, the whole effort uh, uh, with the, the Boise shutdown, the two paper machines and the off machine coder, we were uh, looking to put together a ad hoc study group, first of all, to help the employees and their families. And uh, that was done through uh, Minnesota Jobs. Uh, I think uh, Rainy River Foundation put money up for uh, uh, scholarships for uh, uh, employees. To, uh, to be able to, to go to school there. Um, it was designed to be an ad hoc uh, organization. And, uh, you know, not, I guess, to not go on for uh, forever and ever. That's why we spent what do you do? Uh, thousands of dollars? Well, we spent money for studies and surveys to get information, mm -hmm. right? And that's yeah. that's what that was you the intent. That was only, only to help those displaced workers. You that's created three teams, those and for the I don't believe that. Well, I don't believe that. You created three teams. The ERT did. Yep. That was you, Mayor. Yep. That was uh, Commissioner Pavlik. That was Eklund. Eklund, Rob Eklund, and the fourth was I think Pete Kaler. There was a call out to create three teams. One was a long-term vision and strategy team. Now that doesn't. Long-term vision and strategy doesn't mean that you start and stop. It means that you keep going. That's strategic planning and a part of it. And that's what Voyage Forward is. I'm a bit baffled by your comment. Do you want Voyage Forward to stop? Is that what you're saying? Saying that it was it was designed to be an ad hoc. That's not the question. Well, do you want Voyage Forward to stop? I think that some some uh, parts of it probably need to continue on. Yes. But nothing affecting KEDA? Well, I, I think that we're looking at duplicating is what I see here, and I, I don't understand why. I don't, uh, I mean, I, if you're saying that uh, the KEDA board is doing a poor job, then say it. I'm not saying the KEDA well, board is doing a, uh, a poor job. What this is is bringing, as I said, at, at, at least two dozen times, this is bringing the cities and the representatives in the business community together to work with the executive director to create the one unified message and one brand. So that's not happening? No. I don't believe that it is. 
And I think that if people believe that it is, this presentation wouldn't be here. Expectations are a tough thing to live up to. Um, when I did uh, take part, and I came to the table late with the uh, voyage forward. It was never really clear to me what sort of expectations that people had. And uh, if, if you do have this advisory committee, and I, I agree strongly with Mr. Nevin that communication is a big deal. How is it shaped? How, how often do you sit down and chat with them? And it, it usually takes someone uh, pulling the wagon to get something done at the proverbial end of something. So, you know, do you meet twice a year? Do you meet quarterly? And if you do, uh, make those decisions. How is it structured? And is there is there work? that has to be done on agenda items. Uh, you know, we want to try to make it, avoid making it burdensome. Uh, but, you know, so those are, to me, just some basic questions that just haven't been answered. I, I like the framework. Is it too big, maybe? Is it cumbersome? I, we don't know. Uh, but there'd be work associated with this. And, Certainly, you as chair can, can moderate and facilitate, but there's got to be a certain amount of structure and agenda you. And as to how often, you know, that to me, that's still not something that I'm, I'm aware of. I appreciate all the work that Mike and his cohorts and all the other people have put into this. Uh, clearly, North Home and International Falls aren't the same. Uh, a lot of efforts here don't pertain to the rural area almost at all. So, you know, if you can, if we can create some sort of idea about how to meet, how <coughs> structured, and how often some of the folks that are, are mentioned here in the organizations are are really top flight and key members of our area and community. So, I'd like to see this get done, and it has to how, and, you know, and it has to how much voice it would have. I, those are questions that. I think we'll have to be massaged over time. I would just say, I would agree. Uh, we talked uh, for several years about being more countywide on uh, representatives or opinions or representation from from how uh, they think that the key to meeting we had at North Home as to their, they, they didn't even know what really the KDE a board was, so where they went, if they had a project. And uh, so from just my experience, anything that includes more of uh, countywide, and that this is an advisory committee, it's not a, not a decision making committee. It, as I understand it, your point about working out schedules, who's represented, how often do you meet, that, that's ongoing as far as I can see. So, and I agree with Paul, anything that can improve communication, which is what we're looking for, I'm for it. Uh, to address some of the concerns from uh, I had chatted about a very rough draft agenda for the first meeting. Um, and I actually think we set a date for that first meeting of August 17th in Rainy River Community College. Uh, we talked about having the first 10 minutes of the meeting, if you will, talk about how we got here, why, the purpose, the voice forward. Um, 10, 10 minutes on Keena in the background, some of the issues Paul talked about, what's been tried, what hasn't been tried. Etc., and then quite possibly bringing in one or two, one at least one 
a key person to talk about uh, branding and a unified message. We tossed around a couple of names for every call with the Alpha Christia, Christa, I believe, from CHS Consulting, and possibly uh, who's the second one? <laughs> Deanna? Well, uh, my second person, person, let me put it that way. Um, and then the rest of the time was to review um, the highest priority items outlined in the New Mark Report and to develop a path forward, if you will. The attendance at these uh, at the initial meeting would be um, um, obviously the representatives from the cities, um, the presidents of the financial institutions, it's important that they understand the importance of this and what we're trying to do to get their support in the future. Um, and then once that, and to have them have a voice um, in creating this overall path forward, if you will. Um, and then after that, obviously, they would select their you own know, members who they would want to attend or whatever. But my thought was the first meeting would be an hour, hour and a half at the very most. Um, with monthly meetings after that. Um, further developing the plan, if you will. Um, how many meetings is that going to take? I don't know. Paul had made a comment, monthly may be too much because of the travel time involved or whatever. Um, we disagree um, on the time commitment. Paul would rather have it quarterly. If we do this quarterly, it'll never get done. If it does, it'll be done in 10 years. So I think initially we need to meet at least monthly until the plan is developed, and then possibly lay back and then and then have the meetings quarterly. So that that's that's kind of hopefully answers some of your questions, Mike. Well, I appreciate the ideas. Uh, monthly seems ambitious when it comes to just trying to set a meeting with you folks. Hmm. Oh, it does. <laughs> that's true. And everybody's busy. I, you know, I acknowledge that up front. That everybody, not just you know, and and but the, if we're going to involve these folks from North Home and, and Birchdale, and they're going to be traveling. And I just, it's, I know how hard it is to get a quorum, at, even for our, our other drivers, getting enough people there. It's been a challenge. Um, well, but this wouldn't require a quorum. I'm sorry, Paul. Well, no, but I mean, if you want a That's core group, and if if right. and we looked at branding, by the way, I and mean, it doesn't have to be always in international falls. No, 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 no. That's I, one thing that we heard loud and clear by everyone is that you know, there are other cities in this county besides the falls. We were just in North Home last month, three of us, uh, we visit, and Big Falls. We visited as part of our uh, outreach, so we do make an honest effort to get out there. But it is challenging, with, given all the things that are going on, mm -hmm. as laid out. Um, but just we did look at branding um, several years ago, uh, a countywide brand. In fact, we involved a number of communities in the chamber to kind of discuss it. We brought in JPG Communications out of Virginia, uh, as well as a firm from outside the state. Um, they came back with a uh, uh, proposal for a hundred and thirty thousand dollar countywide branding plan. At that point, we said thank you and we moved on, um, and that was. Betsy Bartz was chamber chair. So, I mean, we, we've looked at these kinds of initiatives before, so I don't know specifically if you're looking at at beefing up the Kita website or creating a secondary website or creating, you know, we've got marketing materials that we use, to, again, for a whole host of, of audiences. Is it is it looking at what we're doing now and then I'm not quite sure if it's if it's creating something new or just adding to what we have. I think reviving that JPG document would be a great start, and at least having the group take a look at it. You know, one of the one of the drivers that uh, um, attracted you know, um, the beautification one at Ward Merrill has um, the one where he's looking at doing the wafer the, the signage throughout the county. That idea actually came from the ARDC document, the Highway 53 corridor project, was it called, or something like that? Corridor. Absolutely fantastic document, absolutely great ideas. I can't remember how long ago that was done, five, six years. I think Wade, you were a part of that, weren't you? And the mayor? The mayor. And Bob? Some great ideas in there. So it's taking that, dusting that off of the shelf, taking those and seeing if there's a possible way to revive those. 
if this is already, I mean, this is, let's not reinvent the wheel, let's use what we have. That's exactly, yes, to, to, to what I think on end here as well as my concern is I don't want to reinvent no. what's been done. Nope. The other thing too is involving other folks like the local lenders I think is always a good idea as well. Yeah, the Kuchko board is made up primarily of local lenders and it's a great opportunity we need monthly to talk about economic development, talk about what they're seeing. Um, so I do have an opportunity on a monthly basis to visit with the local lenders and it's a very good group. Um, Kuchko again is a private nonprofit gap, gap lender. It's been around since 1986. Um, Sorry for the side. I did, you know, I just, I, I'm kind of simplistic here, and that is, uh, you know, two of the issues I'm hearing at the table are uh, Paul and Kyra's time, and Kyra's going to be very busy in the next two years. I mean, she's going to be swamped. <clears throat> as far as, as, far as uh, time, time, that's an unknown yet. I, I, I don't believe we really know yet. We can't tell Paul or, or anybody what's going to be involved. And if it gets to that point, then we need to we need to understand and tackle it. As far as money, another unknown. But like this thing that Mike read here, it says uh, these committees need to their advice can be ignored at any time with no consequences. <laughs> <laughs> but just don't look at me when you say that, Brian. Please. <laughs> no, but it just seems like it's. The time and money are the two things we're talking about, and they're both unknowns right now. And I'm not willing to throw this all up. We have some unknowns out there. Let's let's move forward and see where it goes. It's going to make it, or it's going to, or it's going to fall and fall on its feet. But I mean, let's give it some support and move forward.
Paul and I actually did that the first time we met for 45 minutes, you know. We, I think we also had a Rainy River Community College, if I correct. Correct. Which is, you know, that was, a, that was a, an oversight, definitely. Uh, they weren't even in the continuing relationship with them. That wasn't my fault. I'll blame that on somebody else. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank Paul for his work with Green River and, and getting that, that grant. Yeah. That, that there's some program along. That's been great work. Your leadership was there too. Well, that's, 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 that's how you put that together. That's good too. Yeah, that was it. That's excellent. Okay, so. I was just there if I could, Mr. Chair. Yeah. I would just add this. Speaking of the small cities, and no one hears that more than Mike and I have worked together for years, but I mean, uh, we are out there in the small cities. Citizens don't really know the things that go on out there, and whether it be a little fork and uh, the recent trials that uh, we've all shared, uh, Big Falls, where we, you know, uh, Paul has put in tons of time down in Northville on the nursing home. We've had trips to Bemidji. We, I mean, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. People have no idea how much time takes to pursue these endeavors and try to get things out there in the rural area. Big Falls, their latest projects, I mean, we're deeply involved in those. In fact, Helen and I sit on their ARDC board, Andy Hubley, they didn't know where to turn, I turned them over to Andy and he, he took care of it. So we are out there, but it's, it's not as visible as it is here in International Falls, because the International Falls obviously is more clear, it's more publicity by virtue of being the Capital of Tuchin County, there, there is a link in the paper now, airports, etc. So, I, I want to tell you this that we are, I've never seen as much development occurring as we're seeing right now. I mean, we're in the, I have $50 million worth of projects over the current two year period when you look at all the things we're doing. And we've got Paul involved in most of that, if not all of it, uh, and this board. So, I mean, it's, we have a lot of things going on. Greece is concerned about the financing. You mentioned that. We don't know how that's going to play out. I mean, we're, we're struggling now to fund the things we're in. We have more projects online and all of the uh, cold weather testing. There's another big thing com coming forward. And we have, to, we have to continue because that is a proven uh, industry in this county. In fact, I wish we could, could do more. We've had some opportunities, but couldn't quite put the funding together. So we have a lot going on, and, and that's that's always going to be a concern for Paul's time, just as we were speaking to. So, so, you know, I guess let's see how it works out, how, how it affects Paul. I mean, certainly we need him, we need him working on the projects we've got now because those are probably okay. And at Cairo, too, yeah, whoever brought that up, Cairo has been. For, Turning the can on the both ends here, just on the projects we've got right now. If I could, you know, I know that Paul is, uh, let me rephrase that, I know that the entire team of staff is stressed, overstressed. If you look at this, that, that's pretty telling. Um, but the project, most of the projects that you've mentioned, Commissioner, are community development projects like the sewer, the water, which leads to economic development. One of the things that most economic developments are going to tell you is that community development is economic development. It drives economic development. You need the infrastructure, uh, you need the hospitals, you need the colleges, you need this, that, and the other thing. And, and I am respectful of Paul's time, Kyra's time, and Jenny's time. I know that they bust their backsides. <clears throat> so maybe it's time for the key to board to think about giving them some support in some way, shape, or form. Whether it be with a added personnel, I don't know if that's possible, but I mean, if they're that stressed, um, I think it would be well, money well spent if Paul feels that that's needed. I know you're smiling, Paul. <laughs> yes, Mr. Chair, I, I, I don't know that, I, I think the key to staff is carrying on uh, just a whole lot of items uh, very, very well. Uh, I don't know about being stressed, but I, uh, I guess I continue to, to wonder about this duplication. And I know I'm repeating myself, but it just appears that we are duplicating a whole lot of effort here. And 
That would be fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sure that all of these folks, whoever they're going to be, are going to be well being But I don't want our director to have to answer all the questions and make any kind of promises or any kind of... I, I just assume that his, his board or a majority of the members of his board would, would, would be there to... I guess I got a feeling in the end he falls going to have to defend himself. What? Why would you say that, Mike? Well, just because it's made up of people. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a, 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 a witch hunt. I'm not saying that, but I, I, it don't make sense to me that he's asked, well, why are you doing that? Why did you, why did you do that? And I just don't want to see him have to be the omnipresent person there to answer all the questions. There's bound to be questions, isn't there? Well, I would think so, but I'm, I'm in no way saying, please, say don't attend, don't, don't get me wrong. Well, no, hey, listen, I, I'm supportive of that. I want this communication to take place. So I, I just want to have some order. I don't see this as a, as a, as a you know, let's get Paul meeting. I see this as, as a group of people sitting down and talking about how to move this community and, and I'm not suggesting that that's the kind okay. of thing it is at all. Do you feel like well, like that, Paul? I'm just saying that I think that that's how I feel. I, 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 I won't lie, I haven't said anything. Well, I can say that. Yeah, I don't know. But that's, that's how I can see a meeting like that going. And with 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 that being said, I'm, I'm supportive of this moving forward. But I think when we get a lot of good intentioned people and they see that we don't have the economic development that, that their expectations are, some of the questions are going to come hard, fast, and furious when you get uh, Paul Levin in a room. And I don't think that it's in bad intention of, of individuals, but I do think that expectations are really high right now. I do not know who is going to be the representative from Rainier, but I, can, but I will be at that first meeting. And I can promise you that I will do my damnedest not to make sure that the arrows are hitting Paul. All right? That's not the purpose of this meeting. Absolutely not. And nor do I want to make it that. And I don't think anybody sitting in this room does. Do we? I mean, that's... Uh, but thank you for bringing that up. Well, I also think there's going to be a facilitator there. I, you know, is that going to be you? Or is it going to... Uh, has to... We've got a number of people here, and I don't know how many it's going to be in the end, but... I think we counted a dozen, didn't we, Paul? Thirteen. Well, Thirteen. There's a lot of people, and you have to have someone to lead the process and try to make sure that if there is a, an agenda, there should be some sort of infrastructure that that person can, can help lead the topics, state a topic, you know, when I drove to town today, I decided I wasn't going to say a word here. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did? All right. Um, I think I would trust Mike to be a, he's an excellent facilitator. Maybe since I've been in control, I don't know that, that uh, I would worry much about that. But we have a question there. Yes, we do. Question. Yes. I just I had a comment um, and kind of to speak to Mayor Anderson's concern about duplication um, from a city's perspective from my perspective I see the um, voyage forward chart maybe we need to overlay it onto the Kita design and see exactly where we already fit in um, because there are the city reps are supposed to be represented by the, uh, like Wade is our rep. Um, let's put us, spread that out over it. Just kind of see where those, where we already fit into that chart and try to overlay it, work together and not duplicate, but see where we fit into this chart. And if we don't fit, find a spot on this on this structure, the voyage forward structure has only three branches there, outside of Paul and Kita. 
it's the city reps, where do they fit in the KEDA chart? The business reps, you know, where do they fit already in the KEDA chart? And maybe rather than say that we're trying to recreate the entire KEDA board, it's where do we fit into it? And then those are the places where that communication needs to happen and and work to try to work together that way. I'm, anytime I've ever called uh, the KEDA office, I've gotten all the help I need and answers to questions and um, I find them easy to work with. So I, I want to work with them and I, I want to work with the whole KEDA board. But I think that's part of it is getting the, again, the communication. Where do we fit in and who do, who do we talk to? First stop is always to call their office, but um, as far as the chart goes, and I, I think we need to figure out where we fit into it already. And, and I think as we move forward, we'll see that. Right. There's just a lot of unknowns right now. I think the piece of puzzle will fit right in. Right. I don't see them as two as two separate things. I see them as one. But we have to figure out where those three bottom things already fit into the KEDA chart. Further discussion? Do we have a, a clear path? I think so. Um, <laughs> the only thing that I need to know is do you want, uh, when the agenda goes out, do you want it to go to the entire KEDA board? Um, do you want to participate? Or I, I'm just speaking personally. I think not for me. I think it'd be better for the, the uh, this group to meet, discuss, comes back to us. Okay. We'll have a representative there. Michael is bummed. Don't fear. So I'll be the defendant. <laughs> yeah. You'll do well. You need help doing something. And I, but I, I mean, I'll anyone go. else who wants to attend the meeting, I'm certain. And the meeting is also open in public. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I would, I would assume the email will go out from Paul's office. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. If I could, no, Commissioner Hans makes a good point, though. I mean, that, you know, Paul works for this board, so we're going to have, in a, in a public meeting, is going to have a board member or two there uh, because we make the decisions. Paul did a, a great job of carrying those items. I think it would be great if, if every one of you could be there um, to listen to the folks, at least for the first meeting, uh, to see um, where this goes. Um, I, I think, at least for those that attended the uh, driver meetings that created this document, I, I, I would hope that you were pleasantly surprised we didn't throw too many heroes. I, I didn't have the expectations that, uh, that the world was going to get set on fire. Oh. Okay. 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 Well, I, I understand everything's a process. It is. Commissioner. We need to put that an email or the announcement out as possibly there would be a quorum, so it's a, it would be a public meeting. On August seventeenth, you mean? Yes. Eight o'clock. Why if we get if we get four board members to show up we have a quorum then we'd be a violation of the meeting. We when we have three or more. Okay. I have to confirm that there's a room and, 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 and if we have more than a dozen people we're gonna have to be somewhere else. Um, I think they can fit like thirteen in those conference rooms at Green River. Yeah. Yeah, so we move it from Bacchus? I'm sorry? We move it to Bacchus, the big room? We can move it to Bacchus in the big room. Yep, I can. I will check that when I leave. And um, I'll let Paul know, and then Paul can let the board know. Is that all right? All right. Well, as far as I understand, then this continues in concept uh, only. And I guess in doing so, um, I think we're creating an expectation that there is going to be monies uh, to be spent on, on this process. And one just 
say I'm very uncomfortable with that expectation being out there. Well, we I don't think we've got money to throw around in cold weather testing or under the Pushing Economic Development Authority. Next year looks slightly better than this year, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that we have extra money. We've put we put a lot of uh, public works projects on the side for the last calendar year, and I think this next year we're going to have to do some roads and, and do some stuff. So the the city budget isn't nearly as cheery as I originally made it sound. Well, then I think that uh, without the uh tax bill being passed, there's no increase in LGA, so uh, don't expect any additional funds. I, don't, I think everyone on this board is aware, I don't know if we've made it public, but you know, on behalf of the board, Paul is working on another project that will take place in the airport, and that will require substantial financial input from the county and the city if we do move forward with that. And that'll, be, that'll be coming soon, so, so we've, got, we've got a lot of stuff on the horizon here that are going to cost money. So it is going to be a concern, you know, how we move forward and, and fund fund uh, projects or ideas or what what may come. So that's very legitimate. Thank you. For the comment, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, it was approved conceptually three weeks ago or whenever the board met. Um, is that still a necessity or is this going to be approved? I guess I don't know what the, what 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 really that means. <laughs> My understanding at the last meeting was that it was approved conceptually. You said to go ahead with your letters to the yep. people yep. to continue going, and that that we're in the same mode right now. Okay, so it's the same thing as approved. Well, yes. Gotcha. Yeah. It was said, and, and I like Mike what you said too about you know and all the money we're spending. But about 90% of them are, are infrastructure, which support that amount of development. Absolutely. So it's, the county's always looked at it that way. I know that in the city it does tell that. I mean, it's our job to improve infrastructure as the government is. Correct. To support. Which supports economic, economic development. development. Infrastructure is a foundation for all economic development, and the taxpayers are comfortable when we're doing infrastructure. They see a product uh, for the money they paid. And that's, that's, so that's kind of how we look at it. And I can tell you there are a lot of examples around Minnesota, not too even far away, uh, where cities have not done that, or counties, and their infrastructure is in terrible condition and they can't catch up. So, so. 
again, it's just a philosophy of the governing board of each county how they look at and cities. Now, one of the things that came out of the out of the survey that we did, especially for the city of International Falls, was the majority of the people had answered the question. I think the way that the administrator framed the question was, would you would you consider spending more money on roads and bridges and this that and the other thing? And the resounding answer was yes, absolutely. And it, uh, when I talked to the administrator after that, he was a he was surprised. It's it's not often that a citizen body says spend more money and they clearly did we've done that the last three years yeah and in partnership with the county we've done even more i think we've seen great improvements on the highways coming into here uh, work on highway 53 uh, we'll be doing the gateway corridor on highway 53 in 2020 service of all people yeah. and they yeah, you went out to West Virginia yeah and I came back and they told me my board said I went to the dark side and I was an environmentalist and they started calling me Yule Gibbons <laughs> all right further comment that's a great project though by the way and uh, you know that comes to fruition a huge improvement and, uh, much like Little Fort did a few years ago that you know ARDC was involved in Little Fort and, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.